Welcome to Unity of Wilmington's Radiant Health Series. My name is Reverend Mindy Tucker. I serve here as co-minister along with Reverend Nikki Golden, who's going to pop into the picture in just a moment. And our guest is Reverend Therese Lee from Unity Spiritual Center in Hilton Head. We're going to begin with the daily word. The daily word is clarity. Spiritual vision gives me clarity. And what a wonderful gift of clarity you are, Therese, to the world, especially now with the grief recovery work that you're doing, bringing healing and inviting healing to a lot of people's lives. Yes, thank you for having me. We're happy to have you here. And Therese does grief recovery work. And so we wanted to talk with her today about grief recovery and how we can handle our grief with a greater sense of comfort and a greater sense of awareness and to learn how to allow it to flow through us so that we don't have to be ashamed for feeling grief, which happens sometimes. And we also don't have to stuff it and try to pretend it's not happening. Right, right. Sometimes I get mad. I'm tired of feeling sad. <laughs> Or guilty, I shouldn't feel so sad, or whatever I'm feeling. So is there a step-by-step, -step or are there some tools that we could apply to our lives? Well, I think, first of all, if you will just identify that there's a loss. Uh, because loss, if, if we had an equation, it would be loss equals grief. And we, all, we have not, society has not allowed us to name it. It's like... You lost a job, oh well. You know, you're getting divorced, oh well. Well, each time one of those situations happens, then we have loss. And loss means there's going to be grief if you are being realistic about your feelings. So what I always encourage everybody to do is to just name it and say, oh, yes, I am in grief. Because what we know in unity is if we can name it, then the healing starts to happen subconsciously. And I love the um, definition of grief that uh, I'm trained through the Grief Recovery Institute mm. in Oregon, and it's called the Grief Recovery Method, and I am a grief recovery specialist. There is no theology involved. And that's so it's applicable. Sort of just, just like spiritual practice. There's no theology in spiritual practice. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's, it's about, it, it's applicable no matter w where you are in your life. And here's what they say. Grief is the normal and natural emotional reaction to loss or change of any kind. But I know as a middle child, my dad would say, oh, you know, bucket up, buttercup, you know, type of thing, and just go on and things like that. So what I have, um, I am a widow, and um, I had many losses before my husband passed, and I just bucked it up. And so what then happens is everything becomes cumulative, mm -hmm. yes? And then things become bigger, and you discount the move, and you discount the loss of the job, or you discount the loss of your phone, whatever it is, and what this program allows us to do is to not um, evaluate the loss. There's been a loss, period, right? They go on to say, grief is the conflicting feelings caused by the end or change in a familiar pattern or behavior. So right now, one of the things that we're all experiencing as weekly churchgoers is a loss of community. Right? So some people are having a loss of building because you have such a beautiful home here, right? A building home. And so they don't know that. And what my encouragement is identify what it is that you're feeling. I'm feeling sad. What are you feeling sad about? I'm feeling sad that I can't see my friends. All right. So we start then to unpack what the loss is about. Again, not judging it, just seeing it as so. Yeah, that's the observer. Correct. And kind of, I invite everybody all the time, each time, have a beginner's mind each time something happens. So each week that church building doesn't open, we have a greater sense of loss. 
Now, it might be community. It could be music. It could be relationship with the minister. I'm not sure. It could be coffee in the community room. Right. Or the hug. Or the hug. A lot of people miss the hug. How about the food you all have here? I uh, know we probably <laughs> actually some of it's really good <laughs> and soup Sunday is really delicious yes and so as a society you know I know I've been asked a million times how can you still be grieving if your husband passed eight years ago well there's a difference I'm not mourning anymore and each time something comes up I miss him and it's all right right and when when you know, and I miss my mom on Mother's Day. Well, my mom's been gone forty-eight years. Do I am I grieving her? On Mother's Day, there's a different kind of a loss that comes up, right? Father's mm -hmm. Day, same thing. So, it's not again about is this right or wrong. It just is. And when we come out of all of this pandemic, there is going to be a great deal of people acknowledging their losses. I hope. And that's a lot what you all do anyway with mm -hmm. unity and the, the thoughts held in mind produced after their kind concept. Well, the whole acceptance, what is, is, what is, is, and the law of allowing, this is what is coming up, this is what I'm going to allow, the, and honoring the experience that we're having in a particular moment. Joy, great, go for it, grief. Wouldn't it be wonderful and supportive if people went, great, go for it. Right. And to not to say to somebody, oh, it's going to be okay. We don't know if it's going to be okay. And have one of the things I train prayer chaplains to work, don't hand somebody a Kleenex. Let them have their moment of whatever it is and, and feel the impact of the loss. The other thing that happens, and you guys might be aware of this, when you hear a song, it triggers a memory, right? So that's probably the most familiar people might be with a sense of, oh, that's a loss feeling. That's a grief feeling. And not to say it's not okay. It is. And Dr. Seuss, of course, you know, who's always being a funny man, says, don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. So that's this whole process that I work with people. Can we get to the joy? What would you have wanted to say that you didn't say. And once we can articulate, I wanted to tell you one more time that I loved you. Okay, then say it. I want to thank you for cutting the turkey every Thanksgiving because I really miss you when I have to cut it myself. Yeah. All of those mm -hmm. types of things. Washing the car, mm -hmm. getting new wiper blades. You Mowing know, oh, the lawn. Oh, yes, right? And so we don't know what we don't know until we know it. And like you said, be in that moment. Feel what you're feeling, and it's all right. Mm -hmm. I love that, feel what you're feeling. Because so often we're, we're taught to try to jump over it. Or oftentimes in unity, people will say, oh, don't say what you're feeling because then you'll bring it about. Well, it's already happening inside us. And so when we're able to open up and articulate it, we don't have to shove it down, and we don't have to repress it. We're able to just say it. And emotion is actually energy in motion. So when we are allowed to say it, it just moves on through us so we don't have to hang on to it for a long, long time. And, and you can get to gratitude in that moment. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you know, I am grateful that I don't have to be the one fixing the air conditioning, right? I can now call a repairman. But that doesn't mean I'm not sad that their conditioning isn't working. Okay, and it might get done a whole lot faster. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, if, if you have, so my husband did those types of things. Okay, so I'm sad in the moment. I've got to call a repairman. Yes, but guess what? We get to call a repairman or a repair woman to do those things. So what it does, just like we learn every week in unity through these lessons that um, you all give as, as ministers, is how is it will you be living practically through this to find out what strengths, what powers you have, you're going to call forth. And then maybe yours isn't that good so or strong, you're going to call in somebody else. So I don't sing on Sunday. I would have Mindy sing on Sunday, right? So where are your, where are your treasure troves? And who is it that you can talk to about what you're feeling? Because you don't want to hang around with people who are continuously, as Nikki said, shutting you down. 
shutting you down or keeping you down. Oh, that was horrible. Tell me more. Oh, and then, then how bad was it? And then just keep you in that downward stew. Right. Instead, I might say, oh, I can feel that pain. Now, what? Tell me something great. Tell me about the best meal that he ever cooked. Or tell me about the favorite time that you were out walking your dog. And it's not to minimalize, but it's to shift and see that in life there is going to be happiness and sadness. There's going to be beginnings and endings. And we're big enough to embrace both. Correct. We can be happy and sad in the same moment. Right. We've done, all done that, haven't we? We've cried and laughed. And <laughs> it's not always pretty, <laughs> but we do it in, the same, in that same moment that allows then your body and your consciousness to be real. And that's an expression of radiant health. Mm -hmm. Yes. It is. Authenticity. Yes. But having it all be at the same time, because I'm thinking if I've stuffed my grief and stuffed my grief and stuffed my grief, it's going to start to leak out. And it's going to build, and pretty soon the dam breaks, and all yes. I know is grief. Then I'm consumed with my grief. And I, it's so big that I have a hard time seeing that gratitude and that joy and that Right. And other moments and feelings that are within the big old container. Right. Like a, a simple example would be, let's just say today, this afternoon, we were planning to go on a picnic, but it's raining out. Well, we're so consumed with the rain and the loss of the picnic that we forget when the rain has stopped that there's a beautiful rainbow. Mm -hmm. So how about, oh, I'm disappointed I'm not going on the picnic oh my gosh, look at what the rain brought, this beautiful rainbow. So it's an ebb and a flow, a both and, I always say. Can it always be a both and? That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. yeah. And it gives us permission to expand our awareness and our consciousness to embrace what is. Right. Loving what is in this moment, even through tears. Mm -hmm. Even through tears. Even through the tears. And you know, the ugly cry. We all have them, right? But we the pain them. and the sadness honor the love. Correct. What I know, if I've learned nothing else in these eight years, is when you love big, there's going to be big sadness and a, and a bigger loss to embrace. And so we get to keep, uh, my favorite saying is, here I grow again. As I realize, I, get, I miss Tom most when my car acts up. He never fixed my car. For some reason in my mind, I made that, so my, I get a flat tire, I'm like, ah, I miss him. Why, he never fixed the flat tire. It doesn't matter. Just honor it in that moment and I'll say, all right, you know, and uh, one of the things I think I shared with you guys yesterday is it's this um, living in this new life, um, widow strong is what I call myself, I'm very present to the gifts, mm -hmm. the cardinals, the rainbows, the heart rocks, the presence of friends, the calm, the beauty in the trees, the birds singing. And so it's brought me to a very present moment of living and being grateful for what is now, mm -hmm. loving what is. Well, you, you created that spiritual maturity in you. Correct, and it continues to evolve every day. Yeah, cultivated, I think, is maybe Yes, the yeah, yeah, cultivating it and then um, embellishing it each time and, and, and ebb and flow and know who you can call when you can't get yourself to smile or get to gratitude and have somebody to call that supports you in that and acknowledges the loss at the same time. Can we get, now what are we doing? So what, what's our next step through this, right? And not, again, you said early on, don't be ashamed, there's no guilt. It just is. The ebb and the flow of the cycle of life whether it's a person or a fur baby. And I really like to include all of those things as well. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, I have family, and I've lost my mother and lost my father. I, I, I didn't really lose them, <laughs> but, they, but they died. Um, but I've had, my children are grown, and now our focus is around my grandchild, but our fur babies, our four cats. And we got one that's 18. Right. It, it is possible to grieve in advance. Yes. Oh, yes. And I didn't have that opportunity 
based on the way that Tom made his transition, but there are those who are caregivers and they say goodbye every day yeah. when they're in hospice, and I encourage that. They say goodbye just in case this is the last time. And that's also part of this grief recovery program is if every day you could be complete when you go to bed, that should you get your angel wings that night, all would be well. And everything you've ever wanted to say has been said. Because that's what causes the pain. The things you didn't say, the things you didn't do. And after they're gone, um, physically, we can't necessarily do those things with them. We can still do that activity. However, we can still have those conversations, mm -hmm. whether it's written or verbal. Many years ago, I had a mentor who invited me into that concept of every time I leave somebody important to be complete so that I would not experience that sense of, oh, I wish I had. And I have been practicing that, and it makes a difference in my life. Yes, and I feel that way every night when I'm doing my you know, prayers and my gratitudes. It should it happen tonight, then I'm okay with everybody. And even if I haven't spoken to my children that day or my grandchildren, it's all right, because the last conversation I had, I was complete. And it makes a difference to not let the things go unsaid that are important, whatever it is. It could be as, as formal as I love you to, I love your laugh. You know, <laughs> I, I love your chocolate chip cookies. Whatever it is, say it while you can and while they're able to receive it as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it may be awkward initially to begin to have those conversations, but keep breathing through them, agree to move through the awkwardness, and what you'll find is this sense of spaciousness on the other side and this ability to talk about anything. So, so we're not sitting in a conversation and this thought comes up and, and I think, oh, I can't say that because the thought that comes up is gonna change our energetic frequency. And so if we feel free to just say, oh, I know we're having a really, really good time, but I just want to share that this thought emerged in my mind. I just want to speak it so I don't hang on to it. Speak it out loud and then keep on going. It will open up the space to have a greater sense of heart-to-heart -heart connection. And that's what radiant health is all about. Yes. 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 And it also then allows the other person to share what's on their mind. Because we lead by example, mm -hmm. don't we? And the more we're authentic and real and transparent, the more others are invited into that same space. And that's what our soul desires. Ab uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. It's a wonderful opportunity to face into the fact that at some point, all of us will drop our physical bodies and move on into pure positive energy or pure presence or pure spirit, whatever your term for it is. And being able to face into that, to take a breath into that, allows us to live more fully today. Right. And in the meantime, while we're all living, we can celebrate our authenticity of recognizing the losses which a church community has on many levels. We have on many levels, right? We're not out mm -hmm. going to the best restaurants all the time, or maybe we are. But, you know, whatever it is that we were doing all the time, and as an ex I'm solo distancing, and so that's very different than those who are distancing with a family. And as an extreme extrovert, I have to then make Zoom calls or FaceTime with my children and whomever else, my friends, so that I can say, oh, I am missing the loss of, I am experiencing the loss because I miss the one-on-one. -on -one. So just being present, it helps us be authentic mm -hmm. and real with ourselves and what is it that we need to be the best today? Yeah, yes. Powerful message. I'm gonna go push the button, you guys finish up. Oh. Thank you so much for coming to be with us and Thank to share you. what you yes. know around grief. And we will put Therese Lee's information in the box at the uh, in the comment section so you can get in touch with her if you like so thank you so much for your time and thank your energy you, thank you and i really believe it's called grief recovery so that we can get through it and live yes. in love and as love